now that we've learned about app creation, um, let's talk with Professor Tundalim from National Jai University, who's going to talk to us about his work with iNaturalist in Taiwan and engaging people in citizen science focused on biodiversity. And so again, if you have any questions during his presentation, please add them in the comments and so we can read them out or answer them after his talk. So Cheng Dao, are you ready? He's also yeah. the ambassador for Taiwan for Citizen Science Taiwan yeah. Asia. So do reach out to him if you are working on projects in Taiwan that he's not aware of. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. So, wait for me. can you see my screen? Yep, we can see it. Okay. Um, but I cannot see my screen, sorry. I, uh, wait. Um, it says double click to enter full screen mode. So if you double click it, it should show up. Okay. Wait. Can you see that? Not yet. I think Adrian no. has your slides as a backup, so she can share for you. Okay. Right. So did you try oh. double clicking? Yeah. Okay. There it is. We see oh, it. Great. Okay. So uh, I'm Chen Taoling from uh, Department of Biological Resources, uh, National Jai University in Taiwan. <clears throat> and today I, I want to uh, talk about promote and uh, engage iNaturalist and City Nature Challenge in Taiwan. And uh, the first part, I will intro uh, introduce the backgrounds, especially for uh, biodiversity, citizen science in Taiwan, and uh, the motivation to promote iNaturalist, and uh, some statistics of uh, uh, current status of uh, promoting iNaturalist and uh, our future plans and challenges. Uh, in Taiwan, we have a lot of uh, citizen science project, including uh, like a, it's a very famous uh, location-based awareness of uh, sensing system. We use several uh, micro sensors to collect the data, especially for uh, air pollution data. Then uh, we set up uh, more than, I think more than thousand sensors and we show the data on the website and the people can check out uh, their uh, air status nearby. And we also have several uh, biodiversity clubs on Facebook, just like um, uh, this, the first one is the Taiwan Road Observation Network. Uh, the previous platform was on Facebook. They use Facebook to collect the uh, road kill uh, observations in Taiwan. And after that, they uh, created a website to collect the data. And it is also the most famous uh, citizen science project in Taiwan. And we have also uh, the other like uh, uh, MOS, uh, MOS Information Center, and also some mammals, uh, reptiles, or uh, amphibian. Uh, clubs on Facebook. So there are several uh, smaller uh, projects based on, uh, based on uh, Facebook clubs. Okay. And uh, uh, here I, I want to explain some uh, collecting data models because clean data is very important for biodiversity platforms. <clears throat> the first one is Taylor platform such as uh, Tyrone. They design a uh, um, mature website and they can use the, their website to collect the data or uh, develop the, the application to collect data. Uh, second one is a community-based user group and then uh, most of them just use Facebook social media and they just uh, engage people and the people just put the photos or recordings to the Facebook and it needs a lot of people to uh, organize and tidy up uh, data on Facebook. And uh, so uh, the general process is just like uh, here below. The first one is to define objectives and target uh, specific taxon 
or several taxa and design experimental methods. And the second stage is crowdsourcing. And we are also put some information on social media to request the people to engage the project and ask them to collect the data. And uh, the third part is to analyze and interpret the data. So uh, analysis of this data is very important because some data may be biased. So you have to use some um, techniques to, to compile the data into structural forms, then import the data into relational database. And it needs a lot of people to do this, especially if you put data on Facebook, uh, you need to uh, uh, collect the dates, the timestamps, and the uh, target of this photo, and the people who take, who took this picture, etc. Okay, just like this. Uh, this is one club. It's a, a most information center. They use Facebook to collect data. So if um, volunteer who wants to upload their data, they just put a picture and uh, put the timestamp here, like here, this 2000, 2000, January 17th, and the location, that's here. You can just see uh, it's Chinese character, but uh, it's only a part of uh, the address. It just say, this is a uh, Shangcheng Road, uh, the 45 then. So we don't know which county it is. So we need to check our database to find out which county. Okay, so there are a lot of problems if we, we use such kind of uh, social media to collect data. And uh, at that time, I just think if we develop a system which could be uh, use some uh, automatic ways to collect data, and even you can use some uh, GPS or some automatic uh, automatic uh, script to collect data, it would be better than uh, put data on Facebook or such kind of social media. Yeah, and uh, this is a problem. So uh, the motivation of uh, promoting initiatives in Taiwan just based on this question. So I'm, I was thinking about how to develop an um, application to collect this biodiversity data. And uh, in the first beginning, I just survey a lot of platforms and most of the platform just based on uh, social media. So it's not easy to collect data. So I just uh, uh, found out iNatures and I use it for a while. And I thought it was very uh, excellent for data collecting, especially uh, in biodiversity data. <clears throat> so now, uh, today I, I check the data in uh, iNaturalist. So it's about uh, 40,000 very fewable observation in Taiwan. And uh, it's about uh, more than 12,000 observa uh, ob observers and uh, about 5,000 identifiers. Uh, so here I just make a table you can see here we have uh, uh, 12,000 observers and uh, uh, about 72 people who, um, oh, sorry, who has uh, more than uh, 1,000 identifiers. And compared to other countries, uh, I think uh, we have a lot of uh, data, but we still uh, need a lot of efforts to uh, improve the data quality. And uh, this uh, 40,000 uh, 40, verifiable observation includes about uh, health. Health is about the plant. And the one third is the insect here, the red area here. Okay, and uh, include about uh, 11 thousand taxa and 40% uh, is plant and uh, almost 40% are insects. Okay. 
So if we uh, check out the database of uh, Taiwan, uh, Taiko means uh, Taiwan catalog of life, we have a total of 60,000 species published on the database. And uh, on NHList, it's about 13,000 verifiable observations. The coverage is about uh, around 20%. And the plants uh, is about uh, 49,000 observations, very few observations. The total number is 99,000. Uh, and uh, insects also the similar. And the highest uh, coverage of uh, taxa in Taiwan is amphibian. So you can see there are 42 species recorded on NHList and the, the total number of Tyco is 43. And we also create um, uh, NHS Taiwan groups on Facebook. So people can uh, ask questions here and uh, uh, they can also uh, uh, engage and promote some materials on this uh, Facebook group. And I also create some learning units here, like uh, this first unit is initial setup and uh, register. You can just register here and uh, you can learn from the Facebook interface. <coughs> then active projects, uh, we have a lot of uh, projects here, but this one is, I think is the most uh, important because it is one of the earliest projects in Taiwan and uh, their quality of this project is very, very, very good. And uh, the curator is very aggressive and uh, he is also uh, willing to help other members to identify a known species. And he also published monthly report uh, to tell the uh, member how many new species recorded in this project and also with multiple languages. And uh, the Society of Widenings is most important in Taiwan because uh, it's, I think it's uh, one of the largest NGO in Taiwan. And uh, there are, I think there are more than uh, thousand members. Then one of the important mission is to uh, to do habitat stewardship. So from the northern part to southern part, there are more than uh, 13 uh, habitats. So uh, in 2018, they use iNaturalist to collect data. So it would be easier than the previous method because the previous method they need to uh, to use the paper to write everything, then uh, digitize the data, then put down the database. Then um, um, they need to um, use some uh, uh, method to visualize the data. So it, it will be difficult for them to organize all of this data. So after they introduce iNaturalist to collect the data, it become easier to uh, visualize all of the data and they can also download all the data then do further uh, research. So until now, there are more than, I think more than 100 uh, NHS projects uh, uh, in Taiwan. And this is one of the important uh, annual investigation of uh, their uh, habitat. So you can see the last year they have uh, 55,000 observations and uh, include about 5,000 5, species. And um, the experience to develop and uh, promote INHS in Taiwan, I think they, they are three stages. The first one is initial stage. It's very important because on the menu of INHS, the, um, they just describe, you have to try and test by yourself. So I use iNaturalist for about maybe two weeks. Then I take photos, I create projects, 
I help others to identify the species. Then after that, I, I feel I am already familiar with the interface of iNaturalist. I try to uh, promote iNaturalist to my students. Then the students just uh, thought uh, it, uh, it is a little bit uh, difficult because a lot of species are just displayed as their scientific name or English names. So they don't know what it is because in Taiwan, we, we usually use the common names to, to describe the, the taxa. So the first thing in, in this initial stage is to translate the web and the mobile uh, interface as soon as possible. So I spent about two weeks to translate almost all of the uh, mobile interface. So after late, uh, I contacted the staff in iNaturalist and I gave them the uh, database of common names and the scientific names table. And then they can help to, to put all of the common names on the iNaturalist website. So uh, adding the local name, common names is the very important uh, stage in the initial stage. Okay. Then the second one is expanding stage. So I, I gave lectures and about, I think maybe one or two lectures of a month. Then I have also held workshops, two workshops during the two and a half years and to uh, engage people to know what is the iNaturalist and what can we do with iNaturalist. And the third stage is stable growing stage. I still um, continue to uh, hold the training courses and workshops and start to collaborate with our local NGOs like uh, uh, Society of Whiteness and uh, contact uh, uh, local and uh, central biodiversity conservation agencies such as uh, Forest Bureau or Endemic Species Research Institute in Taiwan. So here you can see the trends here. So I started to promote iNaturalist around uh, October in 2017. So you can see here, uh, uh, this initial stage, we have about uh, less than 1000 observations of a month. Then in the expanding stage, you can see it's uh, almost exponential trends here and the reach about uh, 10,000 observations of a month. Then in the third stage, stable stage, it's about uh, 10,000 to uh, 20,000 observations uh, of, a, of a month. So you can see here is a high, highest peak here. Uh, it's a, uh, April 2019. It's why we have such peak because we held the first City Nature Challenge in Taiwan. So I engage a lot of people and students in Jai, then they participated and they collected a lot of data. About, uh, I think it's more than 30,000 30, observations per this month. Okay, so in January of uh, this year, I start to train city volunteers for INHS because uh, I think uh, it's time to uh, expand them and let a lot of volunteers to um, particip participate in several projects and they can just contribute their, um, uh, their skills, especially for different kind of uh, taxa identifications like uh, mammals or amphibians or reptiles or plants. Okay, <clears throat> so about translation, I think translation is very, very important for non-English users, especially for the users in East Asia. So uh, many users just uh, ask question before translation because they don't know what is the species name. Okay, and it is also important for um, uh, the students, because most of the students also are not familiar with scientific names. 
So complete vernacular and common ends are really necessary. And also education toolkits, uh, we have to translate into our local languages. Then people can read the manual, read the uh, handbook to understand how to, how to use iNaturalist. So <clears throat> uh, here I, I, I use the, to make the control vocabulary because there are different kind of translations. So the first step is to make control vocabulary, then translate as soon as possible. Okay, just like uh, on iNaturalist website, you can see here, you can add your local names here. Okay, you can also put here is Chinese, traditional Chinese, and you can also put a uh, different kind of uh, common names here. Okay, it's the interface of uh, uh, iNaturalist uh, translating platform. Uh, iNaturalist use uh, clouding, so you can join clouding and help to translate into your local languages. And I also use uh, online coll collaboration platform. I used uh, HackMD. It is very easy to use and uh, you can request your collaborator to participate and uh, they can also do some uh, version control and modulize your documentation, <clears throat> which means you, you can create a lot of different uh, handouts then uh, organize them into one place. Okay, it is the interface of uh, HackMD. And I also use uh, iNaturalist to de develop uh, education toolkits. So uh, this is the uh, documentation I try to uh, um, develop the inquiry-based learning. Okay, so define a concept and design the learning, learning unit and also define the objectives to uh, develop the uh, inquiry-based learning. Okay, and uh, I think it's, uh, what is worth mentioning is uh, why developing biodiversity system science in Taiwan is um, very good because uh, we have very strong support from government agency like uh, from uh, Forest Bureau or Endemic Research Institute in Taiwan and we have also excellent telecommunications infrastructure, even in very high um, mountain area or offshore island, we have a uh, um, very good uh, signals. Then I think it's also important, um, important item is uh, in Taiwan, the open culture and open data policy of government agencies is very important because in the recent uh, 10 years, I think the government promote uh, open data and open culture. So we have very uh, strong uh, uh, open culture uh, society. And uh, in Taiwan, we have also uh, a lot of public awareness especially in the field of biodiversity and environmental protection field. So you can check the loss. It is location aware sensing system, uh, especially for monitoring air and water quality. And uh, Ogo Reef, this is saving Ogo Reef Ecosystem Association. Oh, sorry. And the future challenge and plans um, I try to connect uh, enthusiast NGOs and government agencies in this year and uh, continue to construct quality assessment procedures. So this year I try to um, ask a student to develop the quality assessment research of iNaturalist in Taiwan and 
continuing to develop a local uh, education toolkit for different ages. I think it's also important to engage more people because uh, in the first stage, I only um, engaged uh, university students and uh, high school teachers. So if we develop um, a comprehensive educational toolkit, we can extend to junior high school or senior high school students. And also, uh, we support the biodiversity data open. So this open data can support the decision making. And in Taiwan, uh, we created a TBN, which means Taiwan Biodiversity Network. It is a data portal established by Endemic Research Institute in Taiwan. They try to connect all of the open data, either on Facebook, social media, or initialist, or uh, some investigation investigations from government agencies. So you can obtain the data from this TBN portal. And of course it is open. So you can use this data to analyze and then to support some decision making strategies. And uh, also I try to um, join the international network uh, to become a member of uh, NHS network. So I hope we can join maybe next year. And also we are going to participate in Sydney Nature Challenge 2000, 2020 in Taiwan. Uh, this year we have more than 13 counties, almost more than two thirds of counties in Taiwan from north to south, including Northern Taiwan, Taoyuan Xinzhu, Central Taiwan, Jiayi, and uh, Tainan and Kaohsiung. And uh, we, we try to, um, how to say, because it's, uh, uh, it's now pandemic status of COVID-19. So it's a little bit uh, difficult to promote because the government requests us not to uh, get together to keep the social distance. So it's not easy to hold uh, big events. So now uh, I try to uh, engage our students to form small groups and they can go to the field to collect the data this year. Okay, here are some photos of our uh, training workshop and courses of uh, an agilist. This, uh, these people are volunteers of uh, Yusan National Park. And uh, this is one colleague of my department. He's a pterodologist and uh, he helped us to uh, make some fern identification. Okay, thank you. This was and awesome, thank, thank you so much. So do we have yeah, any questions? questions? Oh my gosh, they're all pouring in. <laughs> Someone said, thank you for sharing your work on iNaturalist in Taiwan. In your opinion, how much change policies or behavioral change has resulted from the public awareness and the open data available to decision-making bodies for bio biodiversity or other environmental uses? What are the challenges to make change happen? Uh, well, sorry, I, I, I have a little bit nervous. <laughs> So um, I think um, I think the most big challenge is to increase the data quality, to in enhance the data quality, because we have a lot of enthusiasts who are willing to contribute to their data. So uh, how to control the uh, data quality, I think is uh, the next step we have to face. Just like uh, if we collect the data, many people collect the same data. Just like if you use iNaturalist, you um, observe one individual, maybe one trees in a field. How to know, uh, how to control the, um, how to say, because it would be some uh, special autocorrelation or some uh, special issues. 
So we need to find out the method to fix it. And uh, also uh, we can find many, many data just uh, along the roadside or the hiking trails. So maybe there are some kind of uh, data biased. So uh, I think the, the best solution is to create a systematic uh, grease, then you can control the data quality and you can do some systematically, a systematic survey. Then you can know which, which grid you need to uh, do more efforts and which grid you have already a lot of data. You can just move to other, another or other uh, poor data grids. And it's what we uh, we, we, we already applied this method on our uh, BBS, breeding bird survey, uh, every year. And also the uh, Christmas bird counting, we also use this, this method to, to survey. And also the Rock Hill project, also the same, the same method. So because it is, on, it is still on the, the very first beginning of promoting analysis in Taiwan, uh, we have only two and a half years, but like a uh, Rokio project in Taiwan, it's about, I think it's about uh, almost 10 years. So it's a very mature project. So they have a lot of experiences. So I think uh, I, uh, we, we can learn a lot from these uh, projects. Okay. And another question is, um, receive marine life observation from local divers. Yes, yes, we, we have some uh, volunteer divers like a uh, coral reef uh, protection association. They have a, a periodic uh, survey every year. They also upload a lot of uh, marine life observations on uh, naturalist. What about uh, other people, just citizens, not necessarily part of an organization? Have we had any marine life observations just from people diving and cunting for fun? I think maybe, but I'm, I don't know much more about marine organisms. Mm. Yeah. Okay, any questions? Yeah. Hello? Hello. Yes. Hi. Yeah, myself, Dr. Hassan. Hi, Hassan. Uh, uh, yeah, Dr. Hassan. So I wanted to know about the systematic data on biodiversity that is uh, available in the Taiwan, which can be shared uh, in a greater aspect so, uh, so that we should know about the what are the generally the um, endangered, critically endangered, vulnerable, rare, or uh, threatened, or uh, data deficient the species in your country, that is, it is very not clear, but I, whatever the, you have uh, given the lecture, that is very nice. And we have become enlightened about this. So about the systematic data on the biodiversity is concerned about your country, like Taiwan, and the different places concerned, especially concerned with the animal sciences. That is, it may be available. Um, yeah, um, because uh, actually we have some systematic survey and uh, founded okay. by uh, government agencies. But these data okay. just go into uh, type beef data directly. Okay. Uh, some part of data just go, go to type beef. And uh, I think um, because uh, uh, most of the participants on NHS in Taiwan, they just mm -hmm. uh, citizen scientists or amateurs. Okay. They okay. just uh, feel that they, they just took a picture then upload to iNaturalist. Maybe they just took this once. Then they don't know what is the name. So they upload the data to ask the names. Okay. But they don't know much 
more about the scientific methods. Mm -hmm. So we have to um, teach them how to participate in the project. So, or, yeah. Okay, generally, my, I wanted to know what criteria you adopt during the survey. Uh, you, you mean a taxa? Ah, yeah, taxa. What criteria you adopt during the survey? Because how you can uh, uh, say that this is become the rare, threatened, vulnerable, or endangered uh, biodiversity? So you, you mean uh, what kind of text uh, I survey? Or yeah. I don't survey? Okay, uh, I, I major focus on the plan, vascular plants in Taiwan. Okay, okay. Especially in the alpine environment. Okay. Thank you for the questions. Are there any other questions for Professor Cheng Tao? I don't see any. Okay, Christiane, okay. we can, uh, can you share these uh, uh, presentations? Yep, um, so if you um, look in the chat, we posted the YouTube recording of this presentation and then Citizen Science Asia, um, as Mendel and Scott told us okay. earlier, has lots of okay. uh, different media okay. networks where we'll be sharing it out too. Okay, and yeah. uh, and you can uh, you can just uh, download uh, my presentation on Google uh, Google presentation. It's uh, it's open, so you can freely use everywhere. Okay, and if you have any question, you can just uh, send me messages. Oh, it's very very nice presentation. It's Thank you. Nice. Great. Um, Adrian, yes, do you good. have any other things for us? <laughs> no, I think that's it. I know Chengdao has uh, actually a survey to do tonight, right? Even yeah, an, we an have a night ticket. observation, especially for uh, City Nature Challenge today. Ah, yeah, go out there and get some points for Taiwan. <laughs> yeah, because uh, Today is raining, so I think there are a lot of uh, insects or reptiles uh, come out in the night. So later I will uh, do a survey just around our campus. Oh, okay. Okay. Cool. Well, thank you all so, for participating. Does anyone else have anything else? Cheng Dao, did you want to say something? Thank you. I just say thank you and uh, thanks a lot of uh, volunteers in Taiwan, especially the uh, Society of Wilderness. They contribute a lot of volunteers. They help to collect data. They help to identify. And uh, they also uh, provide a very uh, uh, comprehensive organi uh, organization website that people can join their network and participate, especially in the stewardship of habitats. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. So thank you everyone for participating. We have gotten your emails as you signed in to this webinar. And so we'll be sending you all an email uh, with resources that you can um, learn more about Citizen Science Asia and the projects going on. Um, and you can ask us questions. So thank you all. Mendel, Scott, Caroline, do you have anything else you want to add? No, just a big thank you to your whole team. Um, I'm so excited to keep on watching Citizen Science Asia grow and keep me posted about how I can help over here in Washington, DC. For sure. And just want to thank the speakers and yourself as well um, for helping pull this all together.